Now I work for a hospital, and my hospital is looking into alternative forms of pain control. And one of the ones they want to look at is Reiki. Reiki is an idea of an energy sharing, and the claim is that Reiki can help to reduce the pain in post-operative patients. So I want to develop an experiment to find out if Reiki will actually be effective. I'm going to have two groups of people. I'm going to have a control group of post-operative patients, post-op patients, who do not receive Reiki. And I'm going to have a test group. And those, of course, are going to be post-op patients who do receive Reiki. All right. Each group is going to rate their pain on a scale of 1 to 10. So we're going to rate pain on a scale of 1 to 10. And I want to compare. On average, will there be a lower pain rating among those who get Reiki as opposed to those who don't? So before I do anything else, I want to warn you that I am breaking a rule. And I'm breaking a rule that lots of people break all the time. It's very common. But when you ask people to rate something on a scale of 1 to 10 or on any scale, you really have ordinal data. All you really know is that it's in order, that 1 is lower than 2, that 2 is lower than 3, but you don't really know that the difference between 1 and 2 is the same as the difference between 2 and 3. You do not technically have interval data, and so I should not be looking at the means and comparing the means. And yet it's done all the time with Likert scales, it's called. So here I am treating ordinal data as if it were interval data so that I can do something with the means. Just with that caveat, we're going to go on. All right. So I am looking to see if the Reiki group has a lower mean pain rating than the non-Reiki group. So that's an alternative hypothesis. I'm looking that the mean in the test group is going to be less than the mean in the control group. They're going to report less pain. Obviously, my, uh, my null hypothesis is going to be that they are equal. All right, so I'm trying to develop an, an experiment here. I've got to make a few decisions. First decision is my significance or my confidence. My confidence is the probability that I avoid a type 1 error. I'm going to work at 95% confidence. So there's a 95% chance that I will avoid a type 1 error, that I will not reject a true null. I'm also going to now have to choose my power level, the probability that I can avoid a type 2 error. 80% is very common power. So I'm going to work at 80% power, but with power I need to know a little bit more. I'm trying to avoid a type 2 error, rejecting a false null. So it depends on how different I expect the two groups to be. I want to have an 80% chance of correctly detecting the difference between Reiki and non-Reiki, assuming that that difference is at least how big. And in this case, let's say it's a 1. So I want to have 80% power for a difference of 1 or more. You're going to see that ultimately I'm going to have to put that in as a negative one because I'm looking for a reduction of one since I think my test group is going to be less than my control group. But we'll get to that in just a minute. All right. I am going to have one other problem in my power analysis. You'll see it in just a second. Let's go in mini tab. We're going to go to stat power and sample size. And now it's the test that we're performing. I would be comparing two means. That's a two sample t. And so now I'm going to fill in these values. Now, sample size I'm not going to fill in. That's what I'm looking for. My difference, I was looking for a difference of 1 or more. But because this is a reduction, a less than, I'm going to call it negative 1. My power value, I wanted 80%, which I'm going to put in as a decimal, 0.8. And now you see my other problem. I need to have some idea of what is the standard deviation of pain ratings. I have no idea what that is. So I'm going to use an estimate. I'm looking at a scale that goes from 1 to 10. The range of that, I would just take 10 minus 1. The biggest the range could possibly be is 9. And by the range rule of thumb, you could use as an approximation for standard deviation range divided by 4. 9 divided by 4 is 2.25. Now, that could be wrong. I fully know that could be wrong. In real life, maybe I should do a pilot study so that I could establish a standard deviation and then do my real study. But Right now, I'm using a crude estimate of the standard deviation to try and get an idea of sample size, because I don't want to do a pilot study. I don't want to do two studies, and it'll cost me more money and take me more time. All right, let's click Options. Make sure everything's OK. My alternative should be a less than. And my significance level, well, I'm working at 95% confidence. That is a 0.05 significance. That's good. So I'm going to say OK and OK. 
and here you see I get my power curve for a sa two sample T, but there's my sample size right there, 64. So I need to have at least 64 people in each group. Let me go back to my window so I can type. You can see it even warns me here. The sample size is for each group, Eric. That 64 is for each group. So I need 64 people to receive Reiki and 64 people who don't receive Reiki. I need to have at least 64 in both my test group and my control group.